Lesson 6b, hearing the voice of God, angels. For greater depth in these lessons, in this lesson series, you need Thomas Budmore's book, Hearing the Voice of God. These lessons was taken from this book. Hearing the Voice of God is available on Amazon.com at Thomas Budmore's author page. The address at the is at the end of each lesson. This is the back cover of the book. It shows the order of which these lessons are laid out and also how the book is laid out. At the bottom of this page is the Amazon author page address for this book and Thomas Budmore's books. Hearing the voice of God. The importance of hearing the voice of the one true God, Yahweh. Reading from Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1. The Lord God said to me, <clears throat> Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke to me, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. I heard him speaking to me. Eight different ways God speaks to a believer. God speaks. Are you listening? The first place God speaks to everybody is through his written word of God. He speaks to all humans that way. There are many translations of the word of God. These are men's, men's attempt to translate from the original Hebrew writings and the Greek writings. Scripture reading, Thess 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16, Colossians chapter 1, verse 25 through 26, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. The Word of God is the acid test for all the other voices that speak to a believer. It is the acid test exposing false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, false evangelists, false apostles, false teachings, and false doctrines. Anything that is contrary to the Word of God explains it away, nullifies it, cancels the Word of God, or the works of God, even if it sounds good, or looks good, it's a false teaching. It's false. If it is not in line with Scripture, and if it is not in line in context, and not in context with the rest of the Scriptures, such as paragraph, chapter, book, or even the whole of the Scriptures, it is a false doctrine and or a false teaching. Scripture reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. The second way God speaks to everybody is through the small, still voice. It's the conscious. The small, still voice is the conscious of man. 
This is where God puts his laws and a primary place where the Holy Spirit speaks to all humans. Yes, he speaks to all humans, but not ever all of us listen to him. A lot of them don't know his voice. Some of them's got their conscience so burned that they can do whatever they want and don't bother them any. It's a primary place where God speaks to all humans is that small, still voice. This voice is the voice that believers must come to know. The small, still voice is how the one true God communicates directly with believers today. Anyone who says God does not talk or communicate directly with believers today does not know the Holy Spirit or the one true God. This is the voice the believers must come to know. The small, still voice is how the one true God communicates directly with believers today. Anyone who says God does not talk or communicate directly with believers today does not know the Holy Spirit, the one true God, and they're telling you, they're telling you some type of falsehood. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 25 through 27. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they know me. Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 8. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Shalom. The sinful man is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. Many reasons for the mind to be out of sync with the Holy Spirit. The unrenewed mind takes from what is from the Spirit and perverse it to its own will. If the mind is trained by man's doctrines, then the doctrines of men are the filter of the mind rather than the true Word of God. When the Word of God is contaminated with preconceived ideas of man's teachings, preconceived ideas of man's organizational teachings and doctrines, it becomes a hindrance to the Holy Spirit of the one true God and the believer cannot hear clearly and distinctively the voice of God. The contamination becomes the filter rather than the pure word of God. Now these last six ways God uses mainly to confirm what he is speaking to the believer, what he has been instructing the believer, what he has been teaching the believer, what he has already placed in the believer's heart. Rarely does the Holy Spirit speak through one of these last six ways to initiate instructions, guidance, or teachings. However, there are times when the one true God will use the last six ways when the timing is intimate. In other words, when danger is intimate, God will use one of the last six ways to emphasize the danger. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are another way that God communicates with the believers today. Since the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, Shavuot, those who believe there has been gifts that flowed through that believer who has accepted the Holy Spirit's baptism. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is being fully immersed in the Holy Spirit. Thus, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is being fully immersed in the Holy Spirit if the believer has not yielded his mind, his will, and emotions to the control of the Holy Spirit, then the believer are not, then that believer is not truly baptized by the Holy Spirit. He still has control. And as long as you have control, Holy Spirit will not speak through you in other tongues. Gifts of the Holy Spirit has been in operation since the day of Pentecost. How you receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit when you receive the baptism. But that's how, that's one of the ways God flows through you. This is the gifts of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. 
Reading Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now notice what verse 4 said. Notice what verse 4 said. As the Spirit enabled it. Not as they enabled themselves, but as the Spirit enabled them. It wasn't the believer speaking. It was the Holy Spirit speaking through the believer. One of the reasons Paul wanted to go through it. Romans was to impart unto the Romans some spiritual gifts to make them stronger. That is Romans chapter 1, verse 11 through 12. To the Corinthians, Paul had to define the spiritual gifts so they could come into more unity within the body of the church. Since the gifts of the Holy Spirit are described, these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are described in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Romans chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to make you strong. That is, that you and I may, mute, may be mutually encouraged by each other. Fivefold ministry. All right, we're going to talk about the fivefold ministries here for a moment. <clears throat> Before we get into angels, a fivefold ministry. The reading for the fivefold ministries is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 11, and Matthew chapter 24 and chapter 25. Fivefold ministries. Scripture reading for this is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 16, and Matthew chapter 24 and 25. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 13. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. When the true ministry of the fivefold ministry is ministering under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will confirm or vindicate by the small, still voice. Sometimes that confirmation by the small, still voice is like a yeah in the believer's spirit. It usually because God has been dealing with them about something, showing them in the Word of God something, or something God wants them to do, or God is instruct something God is instructing them in. In addition, the believer, in addition, it fits perfectly into Scripture and does not contradict Scripture, and it always is in context with scripture in context. Whenever the Holy Spirit does not confirm or vindicate a teaching that is spoken, the believer should take it and put it on the shelf. Boop. And leave it there until the Holy Spirit reveals it or has been vindicated it. A teaching or what is spoken should not be used until the Holy Spirit has vindicated it or has revealed it, even if it looks right or even if it sounds good. The reason for this is because and it may be for the person sitting next to you, or the person sitting behind you, or the person sitting in front of you, or the person sitting beside you on the other side. It may be for somebody. Okay? But you may not be at the place to be able to receive it and to walk in it. So you put it on a shelf 
Would you put it on a shelf? Because he hasn't vindicated it yet, the Holy Spirit. Put it on a shelf and leave it there. And when you're when you're able to handle it, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you and you'll be able to walk in it. Okay? Alright, we're going to get into dreams and visions now. Dreams and visions are very important. It saves it has saved many believers' lives. God still speaks to the believers today through dreams and visions. He even speaks to the people of the world in dreams and visions <clears throat> to prepare them for a danger ahead, prepare them for something that's going to happen that they have no control over. All right? <clears throat> now let's read in Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Joel. In the past days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. The use of dreams and visions are important today, as important today as they were during the time of the Old Testament. Dreams and visions in the Old Testament and New Testament are very important. Dreams and visions are hard to distinguish whether it is a vision or whether it is a dream when they come at night. In general, we distinguish between two. Dreams usually come while a person is asleep and visions usually come while a person is awake. When a one true God is speaking in dreams and visions, the believer, it is usually of some type of instructions or warning or even a teaching. Every person who has dreams and visions is not a prophet. Prophets do operate in dreams and visions, and prophets operate in dreams and visions very frequently because they are the spokesman of God. Just because a believer has dreams and visions and operates in the revealing gifts of the Holy Spirit, like the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits, does not make that believer a prophet. To be a prophet, you have to be called of God to be a prophet, and have to receive the prophetic gift of a prophet from God. I can't separate you out as a prophet. If I speak to you and say, well, God said you was a prophet, and God hasn't been speaking to you, you take that and put it on the shelf. Don't ever use it until the Holy Spirit says, yeah, you are a prophet, okay? Jeremiah 23, 28, and 29. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak, speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. There are also false dreams and false visions that come from the enemy, and we have to be able to separate them. Okay? Sometimes the enemy will show you something very dangerous. You're doing something very dangerous to get you not to, you know, to walk in what the Lord wants you to to get instill fear in you. God's dreams and visions don't instill fear in you. They instill instructions into you so that you can accomplish it. And you can test it. Put it on the shelf. If you have dream and vision, you don't work from God or not, put it on the shelf and pray and ask God to reveal it to you so that you know. And if it's not, if God has revealed it to you, you're not following it, you're not falling in the dish, you're not getting dragged away by the enemy. Zechariah 10.2 Idols speak deceit. Diviners see visions that lie. They tell dreams that are false. They give comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wander like sheep, oppressed for lack of a shepherd. There are many sheep out there who are oppressed for the lack of a true shepherd. They have a hiring shepherd, but they don't have a true shepherd. Right. 
Speaking of angels, Hagar seen an angel. When Abraham sent Hagar and Israel away from the camp into the desert of Beersheba, when Hagar was out of water, an angel of God spoke to her and opened her eyes so that because God heard the boy, the son of Abraham, crying, the angel spoke to her and opened her eyes so that she could see the well of water. The read for this is in Genesis chapter 21, verses 14 through 24, 21. Okay? The angel in Genesis chapter 16 that Hagar saw was the angel of the Lord. Think. Some think the angel of the Lord is Christ. And some even think it's God himself. But here's a thought. And some of that appears to be a little bit more spiritually accurate with the scriptures. Why isn't the angel of the Lord the Holy Spirit? Because he's the one here on earth that does the work of God. The word, the Hebrew word and the Greek word translated as angel simply mean dispatched as a deputy or a messenger. It includes apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And even believers can be an angel. An angel dispatched from the one true God is a divine messenger. An angel could be a supernatural being or a person from the one true God. Could be another believer from the one true God. Angel sent from the one true God can manifest themselves in appearance that is tangible flesh or in a vision or dream. The one true God sends an angel with a message to protect or to fight for God's saint, for his saints, his chosen people. Are you a saint of God? Not a religious saint, but a true saint of God. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're back, if you're giving your heart to Jesus, born again, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and following God's will, then you're a saint of God. Not a religious saint, you're a true saint of God. Okay? Angels said for one, God can manifest themselves in a vision, in the tangible flesh, or in a vision or a dream. The one true God sends an angel with a message to protect or to fight for God's saints, his people, a true believer. God also sends angels to his chosen people with instructions. An angel sent from the enemy, the devil, Satan, that great deceiver, are called demons. These demons cannot manifest themselves in the flesh as angels from the one true God can. They need a body to interact with this world. The angels of Satan can masquerade themselves as angels of light. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. These angels have one main agenda, to kill, to steal, and to destroy the works of the end, the same works as the enemy Satan has. You can read this in John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, 10. Hallelujah. Now, you can test every spirit. The believer is to test every spirit. According to 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, the teach teaches the believer to test every spirit because they are not all from God. But and there are some that are from the one from the destroyer from Satan. If the believer has not renewed his mind to the Word of God without any contamination, the believer can easily be deceived into accepting a doctrine contrary to the pure Word of God, a doctrine of demons. Scripture reading, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. 
2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. First Epistle of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see where they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out from the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. Reading from the Amplified Version, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but prove, test the spirits to discover where they proceed from God, for many false prophets have gone into the world. Reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, beginning at verse 7. Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. All books available by Thomas Crosswalker Moore are at Amazon.com. The HTTPS address below is for the web address of the author page at Amazon.com. Also, the books can be viewed and checked out at my web page at CrosswalkerTBM.com. Adventures of Jesus is my first book. It's my testimony about how I come to the Lord and first two years of carrying the cross. Christ Realities is a lesson series that's important to new believers, but also for those already in Christ Jesus. It, this study of lessons will bring forth answers to many of the questions about who am I. The lesson 
this brings forth what it means to be born again. All books available by Thomas Crosswalker Moore are at Amazon.com. The HTTPS address below is for the web address of the author page at Amazon.com. Also, the books can be viewed and checked out at my web page at CrosswalkerTBM.com. Here are a few slides from my walks from 1981 through 2012. And a total of 17 crusades. Contact information. You can contact me through crosswalkertbm at gmail.com. Please reference the title of the video at the beginning of the message. My web address is crosswalkertbm.com. More information about lessons, books, CDs, DVDs, and even my um, YouTube page. Uh, you can check out Facebook at Thomas Crosswalker Bud Moore. My author page at Amazon.com Amazon is listed below. So, may the Lord bless and keep y'all.